Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of It's A Sure Thing, the community wellness collective broadcast that's live streaming across 50 TV channels on demand um, and also across my LinkedIn pages, YouTube and lots of other different Facebook pages related to what we do here. So thank you so much for joining us. Please um, please let others know about tonight, uh, wherever you are, and please be welcome to join in and comment in the comment section where you're listening from. Um, and for those that are listening to the replay, thank you for doing so. I know we've had a great interest so far for tonight's guest, who is an amazing, incredible man who I met many years ago. He's participated in the Enlighten Adelaide Festival for a number of years and also the Riverland Wellness Festival. So many of you may already know him. He's very well known in South Australia. He is a connector and a networker um, and he collaborates with people and shares with people. He's amazing. He's got a background in science and medical research and his healthcare experience is both conventional and complementary. Uh, so he comes from both perspectives and he, he provides a holistic and in intuitive approach to healing and wellness with body work and aromatherapy and loads of different things that he does. So I'll, I can't wait for you to meet him. So please welcome Tobias Kelly from Advanced Holistic Remedies. <laughs> Hi, Tobias. Hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on here tonight, Tobias. And you've been a member of the Enlightened Tribe Global Wellness Directory for a while too. You're one of the first to hop on board with that. So, so thank you for that. Um, so tell us about healing with aromatherapy, because that's what we're talking about tonight specifically, plus lots of other things. So healing with aromatherapy, what does that actually mean and how does it work? So healing with aromatherapy is a very big topic. Um, I first got interested in aromatherapy when I was about 14 years old and um, my mum took me to a naturopath and I was in year nine and um, I was getting a little bit nervous about doing tests and doing exams and all that sort of stuff. And anyway, um, the naturopath at the time introduced me to basil um, essential oil and I actually started to think, oh, this is actually really working for me because I noticed when I used it, I put it on a tissue and just breathed it in. I actually felt much calmer. I felt more focused and I felt more alert and um, I wondered, oh, there's something in this is more than just a smell. And so from that age, I got interested in, you know, other essential oils like lavender, um, tea tree, eucalyptus and so on. And basically I decided um, from a young age that I really enjoyed using essential oils. Um, then I met a friend uh, called Stuart in about 2008 and we ended up working at the Wayman Festival as massage therapists. And I noticed that when I was there, there were a lot of people who had um, a whole range of different products, including essential oils and you know, other beautiful products. And someone said to me, Tobias, you love essential oils, why don't you make a product? And so we got together and we decided to actually do a process with the essential oils that I had at home. And what we did was we actually put them on the wall. Uh, we drew, drew some pictures and we actually mapped out the chakras. And we basically decided to actually intuitively work out which essential oils work with with chakras and over the process of maybe a few weeks to a few months we mapped out about maybe 25 different oils and then i decided to actually make up some sprays to help with the different chakras and so it all sort of happened organically and um, i developed the three basic products that i've got now um, and i found that when i started to use them with my clients and my customers um, they said oh this smells really nice you know what's in it and um you know, I told them they were quite amazed because they said to me, it smells like more than essential oils. What are you doing here? There's something special about it. And I said, it's not just the oils, it's also the way you combine them, it's the intention. And there's also an alchemic process that occurs you know, when you actually put things together. So it's a whole, um, I guess it's, it's the whole philosophy of um, combining, you know, essential oils with um, the chemistry, the science, the intuition all together in one. Well, I have to say that I have used your your sprays, your aroma mist, for a number of years, and they they're pretty magical. I've, I I do actually make my own clearing sprays, but that's just kind of something that I that I do with just some distilled water. But what you do and what you've created, there is just there's nothing like them. They they really are pure and quality. 
and you can tell with the intention as soon as you spray them <clears throat> something happens so um they're, they're beautiful can you just show us one of those please yeah. tobias okay because they come in different sizes don't they they do yeah so i've got three different sizes that's a small size and i've got a large one and a <clears throat> economy size one as well um when i first started um it's really funny because I basically had these plastic bottles and I was going into um, the clinic and I was going to workplaces and doing massage and I just did it sort of quite rough and ready and I, I sort of you know, chose an essential that I liked, mixed it with water, sprayed it and then sort of went back and refined it and then I sort of got to sort of understand um, how they actually blend together and it's a little bit like wines as well or you could even say it's a little bit like blending tea because one of the, the main concepts of making a beautiful blend is to have a base note, a mid note and a high note. So the base notes are things like the woody herbs, like frankincense, um, cedarwood, sandalwood, and so forth. And then you've got your mid notes, which are more things like basil, uh, lavender, uh, tea tree. And then the high notes are more the citrus essences, so things like lemongrass, lime, and peppermint. So part of that um, process is to find a nice um, balanced bouquet. And on the physical aromatic level, that creates a beautiful scent, which is what people get drawn to. But at the same time, it's also the combination together. So the you know the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. So beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah, because you can't literally just throw stuff together. It doesn't. No. It actually, it doesn't really work. It, it, it's 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 a process. It's an intention. I love the fact that you said it's an intention, because yeah. when you're creating this, like you spend time, you you actually draw in some sacred geometry as well, don't you? Because mm -hmm. you work with organite. I do. Um, and other different things. Now, you may need to just a little uh, give us a little explanation of Organite. Um, but oh. be before that, we might just go back and just check that people actually understand what a chakra is. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> not everybody does know. Can you give us a little explanation on what a chakra is, please? Okay. So my understanding of a chakra is that it's an energy vortex, which is located in the energy body within the auric field. And there are seven main chakras that we tend to talk about um, from the base chakra just below the base of the spine, all the way up to the crown chakra, just above the head. And so these act as an etheric form of, um, I guess, energy transmission in and out of the body's energy field. Um, so these chakras work together to balance um, the various organs, systems, tissues, and emotions. So they work on all different levels of the being. Um, and one example is the heart chakra. So the heart chakra is obviously in the center. It's number four in the seven chakras. And the heart chakra also has a color, which is green. Mm -hmm. So each chakra has its own separate color, uh, from red all the way up to white. And a good comparison would be the rainbow. So going through the rainbow colors. So red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, and white. Um, so each chakra has its own specific um, energy. Each chakra has its own specific properties. And together, you know, in harmony, these help to balance and align our energies so that everything can work together. Beautifully described. Thank you. And just touching on the colour therapy side of things, you you've actually created the the particular logo um, for advanced holistic remedies and also the the sim yeah yeah the symbols of the so you've got the three main sprays. So can you just tell us what three sprays you've actually got? Okay. The so spray? the first the first one starting from the um, the bottom, we've got this one here, which is relax and restore. So this is designed as a, um, a balancer for the base chakra particularly. It's very grounding. Um, it's very uh, good at connecting you to the earth. If you're feeling unsettled, if you're feeling spaced out, um, it can help to bring your energies um, down uh, into the roots of the earth and help you to reconnect back to yourself. The second one, which is this one here, is the balancer one. This is Calm and Clarify. So Calm and Clarify is designed uh, with intention to balance and align and focus. So during times of stress, anxiety, when you're feeling um, a little bit scattered, uneasy, nervy, it helps to basically bring things together and um, just bring you back into your heart, reconnect back to yourself and back to your emotions. And then the third one, which is Revive and Vitalize up here, is designed to be an energy booster. So you could think of it as uh, an alternative to coffee, but without the side effects. Um, so this one has got more of the, the higher energies in it, things like, for example, on the essential oil level, it has jasmine, uh, it has um, citrus, so it has lemongrass and lime, 
and basil and other types of essential oils. So they all have different intentions. Um, and the thing about them is that whenever someone chooses one, you can never get it wrong because um, the intention is that whatever they choose will work with them in accordance with their highest good. So. Beautiful. Thank you. So we've just got a few questions coming up now. Um, and, and actually, just so the logos, I think they were created by Beck Calabro, weren't they? Yep, yep that's Did right. Beck Calabro, who created the Enlighten Adelaide logo as well. Yep. So, um, yeah, anyway, so Joan Carpenter has joined us saying hello, beautiful souls. Hi, Joan. Hello. Lovely to be here. There's a couple of Facebook users who I'm not sure who they are, um, but hello. <laughs> and Adair has asked, how do you know what oils go well with each other? Is that intuitive as well? Good question. Well, okay, that's a good question because um, there is a school of thought that there is a bit of chemistry to putting oils together. Um, and, you know, I guess that you can look at it from a scientific point of view, but at the same time, getting back to that whole process of blending things like wines and teas, uh, it really comes back to personal preference, I think. Um, and I've, I've found that over the years, um, as I've started to um, become more aware of all the different essential oils out there, it's made me more specific about you know what i choose to actually put in the products so when i first started um i only made uh, 25 essential oils when i did my basic studies in aromatherapy and um so that's all i knew um and then as time's gone on i've got maybe 80 90 different essential oils at home now so i've had to really develop a greater understanding and it's all it's it's basically a process of refinement it's really i mean i don't think you can get it wrong because i think as you go along you learn what smells right and what smells wrong and you know, you can get a sense of, um, you know, things just being off balance. Um, I tend to sort of tune into the to the, each formula and just get a sense of, um, you know, how it feels, how, how it smells. And in fact, when I first did it, it's quite funny, um, I actually did it drop by drop. So I actually started with the basic plan of doing 10 drops of each essential oil. And then I sort of refined it and tested it, refined it and tested it. And... I've also found that some people just don't like the smell of certain things as well, which is quite funny. So um, one client said to me <laughs> when she was about you know, five or six, her grandmother used to wash her mouth out with lavender soap. And it was that, it was that you know, that Yardley soap that you, you know, all your grandmas and, grandma, and grandpas and grandmas used to use back in the old days. And so she hates lavender. She, she can't stand it. Um, and then I had another client who can't stand orange because they're using cleaning products. So I think that you can never get 100% right, but, you know, I think the most important thing is that you like it, and if you like it, that's what's important, really. So. Yeah, no, great. Thank you so much. And somebody else has asked, what blend would you suggest for mind and body balance? So for mind and body balance, um, I would suggest, out of the three ones that I have, I would suggest the Calm and Clarify, which is this one here. So that in particular um, is very good. If you're feeling... Um, there are times when you can feel like you've got too much energy and there are times when you can feel like you're really flattened down. So the Calm and Clarifier is designed to balance you either way. Um, and I think that because it has um, just the right blend of um, the oils, but also um, the intention that I put into it. I mean, the, the chakra itself, if I can show you a picture, if it's all right to just bring it a bit closer. Yeah. So just to bring that in. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So each chakra is uniquely different. Um, as you said, Becca Clabro helped me create these. Um, so I find that when people actually look at it on a subconscious level, they're drawn to you know a few different things. They're drawn to the color, they're drawn to the pattern, the design, they're drawn to either the name or the smell. Um, and so all those things together, you know, combine and create, you know, um, I guess the attraction to choose what is right for you. So. Definitely. Thank you. And we've got Joan said, I love all your sprays, Tobias. And here, here, I do too, Thank as I've already said. And Sarah Tapp's got, hi, Sarah. Lovely to have you here. She's put, she loves the revive and revitalize spray. So, all right. So, yeah, excellent. So, um, we'll talk a little bit now about the other therapies that you do because you do a lot. You do a lot. You've got polarity therapy, myofacial release, craniosacral, energy work, colour therapy, aromatherapy, and everything for that individual. So whoever comes to see you, what happens? Okay. What happens? So I guess for me, um, I tend to get an impression before they walk in the door. So as soon as someone books in, um, I get a sense of 
you know, what they need. I get a sense of uh, why they come to see me and I intuitively start to tune in that way. So other times as well, people will walk in the door and I'll sometimes pick up on visual cues, the way they walk, um, the sound of their voice, how they're feeling emotionally. It really depends on the, you know, each individual. Um, when I first started doing healing, uh, I was taught a basic sequence. And I, I studied um, relaxation massage, which is based on Swedish massage. And that was more of a dot to dot you know, routine to give me a, a good sort of um, understanding of how to give a massage. And as time went on, I realized that I could actually make up my own stuff too. You know, even though I've learned all these different techniques and done all these courses, um, the part of, I guess, being intuitive is that you can actually do things as they come to you. And sometimes I'll get guided towards a technique that I've never been taught. And this has happened to me particularly, um, I can think of an occasion with um, a Japanese uh, technique, which is called Enma. And Enma is um, the grandfather of Shiatsu. So everyone's heard of Shiatsu. Um, well, Shiatsu um, basically came from this, this form called Enma. And sometimes when I'm doing this particular technique, I'll get guided to, to move my hands a certain way and to do a certain um, specific movement, which I've never done before. And I'll go to my book and I'll look stuff up and, oh, that's that particular movement or that's... And it just happens sometimes. And I find that with certain people, um, when they're open to receiving and they're willing to just allow the process to, to occur, amazing things happen. That's when the healing occurs. Um, and I guess, um, you know, for me, I find it much easier just to get myself into that flow state and just to really sit and allow myself to be with that person and to have that presence um, and same awareness that I can feel what's right for them at the time. So, Yeah, beautiful. Well answered. Thank you so much. Right. We've had uh, Tanya, thank you for joining us, Tanya, has asked if you'll be at the Riverland Wellness Festival this year. Unfortunately, I won't be. <laughs> Not this no. year, but you have no. been many other years and it's yeah. been wonderful to have you there. So, however... You are, you, people can purchase your products online and we might as well jump into the fact that you're actually putting out a special offer um, and you're doing 25% off all your products and we've mm -hmm. only talked about three of them so far. We'll talk about the rest in a moment. Mm -hmm. So 25% off all your products for the next three days by using the code SUREThing25. That's great. There we go. There it is. So let's have a little chat now then about your other products. So you've got Massage Balm. I do. I do. Um, so this is quite an interesting story. Um, does the name Edmund Gooden ring a bell? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jo Joan knows Eddie. Um, so back in about 2017, 18, I was at the um, Spring Fair uh, up at uh, Waldorf Primary School. I oh, sorry, Waldorf School. And... Um, Anyway, lo and behold, in comes Edmund. Um, I'm doing massage there at a store and I hadn't seen him for many years. And Edmund walked up to me and he said, oh, you look familiar. Um, and then, you know, we got introduced and we chatted and he said to me, oh, I've got my own range of products, um, blah, 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 blah. And he said, oh, you've got your own range of sprays. We should collaborate together. And so what do you know, um, we did. And basically, uh, Edmund and I have been helping each other out for the last well, two or three years at least. And um, I had always wanted to produce my own balm um, because I had a company years ago in Queensland that was making a beautiful product. But unfortunately, with all the stuff that's happened with COVID, um, supply became an issue and I couldn't get hold of um, certain products. And um, anyway, it was a good reason for me to say to Eddie, well, you know, can you help me out? What can you do? And so, yeah, we're together, we developed a balm, um, which is called Revitalize. Um, and this is the, the balm here. And this is based on um, Eddie's work for the last 10 and 12 years, plus my input as well from the essential oil point of view. Um, and so we've incorporated a combination of bush medicine, aromatherapy, uh, as well as um, skin science as well. So, so and, this bar, it, sorry. No, I was just going to say, and I've used that as well, because, and it's beautiful. And Edmund Gooden is from Sacred Grove, so he's got his own property where he collects all of the plants and natural resources to go in these uh, balms as well yeah so yeah, so, <laughs> yeah so yeah eddie's um he's a fantastic um wealth of knowledge and um i i have to say you know, i'm very grateful for having met him and um you know we always get excited um when we get together because we always talk about ideas and we've got another idea to do to, to do another product in the future um we're looking at maybe 
making another barn together or maybe even a, a bush spray of some sort. So, um, but uh, the thing I really like about Eddie is that he's passionate about um, the plant science and he's passionate about uh, the way he grows his, his products. Um, he grows um, emu bush, he grows uh, Australian pine and also the sandalwood. And he's got um, you know, a beautiful property up there in Australia Alvin. Um, and I really do believe as well that he puts a lot of intention into the way that he does things, um, like myself. And you can feel that in his products as well. Um, and I'm sure you've tried his products, Sue. You know what they like. Yeah, yeah, I have. They're, they're brilliant. And and dynamic duo, you know, Jones just said, yeah, it smells divine. It works well. What a team you two are. And it's South Australian. Good point, Joan. Yes, it's South Australian. It's local. Buy local. Support local. Um, now, Adair's just asked a question. Does it work for skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, and dermatitis? Good question, Adair. Yes, it does. And the reason um, that I can say that is because Eddie and I have tested it with hundreds of different people. Um, and we've actually found that because it has a combination of beeswax and olive oil, which are very luxuriating and nurturing for the skin, we found that it actually has a very um, healing effect in those types of conditions. Um, so psoriasis, dermatitis, eczema, even skin reactions. So people who've had, um, you know, a breakout of, um, you know, like it could be a rash or that sort of thing. It's very calming for the skin. Um, and in the whole time that I've been um, making the product with Eddie, we've never had one negative reaction at all. So um, that's with hundreds of people. Um, and the other part of it is that because it has um, the beeswax and the olive oil, and as well as the, I guess the main difference is that it's got um, what's called a herbal emulsion. So the herbal emulsion is where you actually put the plant material into an oil and you let it sit for a period of say six to 12 weeks. And what that does, it actually extracts out the nutrients uh, into the oil. So it's almost um, in Ayurvedic terms, I think they call it herbal pulling. And so what that does is it actually allows the active nutrients to absorb into the oil. And so when the oil and the bun, sorry, the oil and the um, wax are mixed together, it creates a beautiful emulsion, which is easily absorbed into the skin. So it becomes what's called bioactive when you put it on the skin. So the plant material, you know, is, is sitting there in the bun active. And then when you put it on the skin, the heat um, helps the uh, bun to actually uh, melt onto the skin or essentially just dissolve and it absorbs right through. But the other thing that's uh, important is we've added um, a beautiful um, range of essential oils. We've put um, lemongrass, uh, lime, peppermint, and lemon myrtle. And together, these create a really nice uplifting effect. Um, which is why it's called Revitalise, because it lifts your energy. And um, I've actually got a few customers who, instead of using it as a balm, what they do is they just put it on their pulse points and they use it almost like a, I guess the term would be a pomander, which is a, a French um, term from the word pomade. And um, you can actually put it on um, the various points, like the pulse points on the wrists, you can put it on the, the temples, uh, you can put it on the third eye, and you'll find that even just doing that in the morning, it actually... Um, creates an energetic change and it actually makes you feel you know ready and prepared for the day so beautiful tips <laughs> now with all the other services that you offer your you do seated massage and you also go out and, and go into the corporate world and you do yeah. massage and you've done that for many many years so you're out there in the corporate world doing seated massage yep and uh, at the moment you are working out of higher health wellness center in mile end mm -hmm. so are, you there, are you there every day what are you uh, no, I'm currently at higher health at mile end on thursdays and fridays and then i do workplace massage on some tuesdays and some wednesdays uh, at the moment um, i'm actually trying to transition to doing more clinic-based uh, massage and healing services because with everything that's happened in the last um, 18 months two years it's obviously been a little bit harder to um, go into the workplace um, for, for you know obvious reasons so I'm sort of um, finding that um, more and more people are wanting to come and see me at the clinic uh, because yeah. of that. And um, the other, I guess the other good thing about working at the clinic is that I can set the space up the way that I want it to be. So I can make it as welcoming and nurturing as, um, as I, I would like it to be. Whereas when I go into a workplace, I'm dealing with you know, all different scenarios and all different situations. Um, and the other thing I do, um, do occasionally is um, home massage as well so um, on some of the days that I have away from the clinic I also offer home massage services occasionally too so um. great that's good to know and um, now on a completely different well not completely different it's all complementary to what you do 
um, you're, you do some sound healing and I music. I do. So, and you're currently <laughs> learning to play some instruments. So what are, you, what are you learning? Okay, so, um, well, I first started to learn the flute back in primary school. And uh, believe it or not, I did play in a jazz band for a while. Um, it was a community value jazz band up at Lobethal. And um, I did that till I was about 14. And then I had a bit of a break from music and decided to, um, you know, I just got busy with my studies and all that sort of stuff and had a rest. Uh, but then recently um, I met uh, a couple of good friends, uh, one who has a sound studio up in the Hills. His name is Colin, Colin Forster. And anyway, uh, Colin's a um, maestro on about 10 or 12 different instruments. And he's got a drum kit, he's got a piano, he's got guitars, he's got, you know, um, everything you can think of, you know, percussion, da da da. Anyway, Colin said to me, if you ever want to learn something, I'll teach you. <laughs> and, it, you know, and I, and I just got inspired. And um, anyway, as it turns out, uh, I've been wanting to play the guitar for some time. And Colin's given me a few tips and tricks. Um, but I've also found a teacher in Mount Barker, uh, and she's fantastic. Her name's Erica. Uh, I've also decided to take up the banjo uh, because they're both string instruments. And um, I thought, well, I may as well just keep going and I'm learning the tongue drum and I've got a keyboard at home and I've got a few other things. So um, I love music. I love sound. Um, and I feel that as things progress um, and I start to get more into the sound side and the music side, I'll probably start to develop my own music, hopefully. Um, and I have a vision for um, perhaps creating specific music um, so, so I can use it in a healing setting. I can um, help provide music for other clients or customers. Um, and I just love, you know, I love the atmosphere that it creates. I mean, the whole thing about having the right music, um, it sets up, you know, the right energy. It sets up the intention. It creates a space um, and it helps people to connect to a different part of themselves, um, which you know, um, I think is amazing. And I think I've seen some amazing things just by finding the right music um, and the right atmosphere for people. It can just put them into the deepest states and create the most profound um, experiences, really. So. Oh, well, that's absolutely wonderful and exciting. And I know that you will succeed because you do at everything. So you're an absolute champion. And I've really, really enjoyed having you on tonight. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you to everybody who's participated and, and, and joined in and made some comments and all the rest of it. So if people would like to get in touch with you, they can go to your website or they can go to sueshore.com.au and go to the Global Wellness Directory to have a look. They can go on your Facebook page. You're also on LinkedIn um, and your website, as we said before. Um, and if they want to purchase anything over the next three days, 25% off using the code SHOREThing25. Right. And can I just say thank you, Sue, for everything that you've done for me over the years as well. Um, you know, I feel that, I think the whole thing with being part of the, you know, being part of the tribe and being part of this group, it feels like we, I think that, you know, this will sound, you know, a bit wishy-washy, but I really feel like there's a sense that we've done this before. There's a sense that we've been here and we know each other at a deeper level, and that's everyone in our group. Um, we've got some amazing people. Um, that have come together uh, as a community and I'm really thankful to be a part of that, that community. So. Beautiful, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's because of everybody that it makes it like this. So yeah, without you guys, it's not possible. So thank you so much and thank you everybody. And yeah, have an amazing time to buy us. I look forward to watching you develop your sound. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone.